Welcome to part five of Power in His Name. This is the final uh, part in the series that we've been doing and it has been powerful. We've been digging deep into His name and the different attributes, the gift that is His name, uh, what He did for us on the cross, how He defeated death, hell, and the grave. He became our last Adam for us. And not only that, but we have now been crucified to the flesh shame is gone and we've been given access to his name so there is so much that we've been going into and tonight we're just continuing on uh, by going into acting in his name so taking his name and acting on it That's right. not just saying oh yep i watched his study i know what's going on <laughs> but putting it into practice and actually acting on what we've read and what we know putting it to practice in our life. Now, as a grandma, whenever I say goodbye to Gracie, I always give her instructions. And I expect those instructions to be carried out. Well, when Jesus left this earth and he ascended to be with the Father, he gave instructions. And I kind of jotted them down. First of all, when he ascended, he told his, his disciples to do everything in his name. Mm, well, yes. you know, that's our instructions. We need to do everything in his name. But then he also said, number two, do it by his words. Yes. You know, that I tell Gracie all the time, not only listen, but obey. Listen and and obey. And that is the same thing that you and I need to learn is we need to listen to his word because faith cometh by hearing. Yes. But also by doing the word. So he has said and used my name. He said, not only do you need to do it by my name, but by my word. But he also said, have faith. Mm. Have faith in my name. And so when we have faith in his name, we'll see things in our lives totally changed. And each one of these things are available to you and I as a believer. Yes. And they're simple little, little things, just like when I tell Grace, who's three, to do certain things. I don't sit there and make a huge list. I make it to where she can follow. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand that we have to have faith, not only in Jesus, but that what he has said he will do he will do it. So Michelle, I'm going to have you look at another scripture we've already looked at, Ephesians 6, 16. It talks about the shield of faith. Amen. So this is talking about the armor of God, uh, and it's also talking about the shield of faith. And we see this in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. It says, in addition to all the rest of the armor of God, it says, do this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So we're to pick up that shield of faith that's been given to us. Don't just put it on a shelf and say, oh, yeah, yeah, I know about the armor of God. I went to VBS when I was a little kid. <laughs> Take the armor of God, put it on, and use it. This is not theatrical. This is not childish. In fact, it would be good for us to become more childlike, to have faith like a child, and to put on the armor of God and pick up that shield of faith. So often we just go out naked. We don't have on the belt of truth. We don't shot our feet in the peace. We need to also take up the shield of faith because yes, it says, well, yes, <laughs> but sometimes I know in situations, I know that I'm, I'm different and weird, but if I'm being attacked, I just find myself doing this. Mm. I've taken up the shield of faith that quenches not just a few, all the fiery darts Amen. of the enemy. And that's my promise. And I, I trust what I've been told in the Word of God because I trust Him. Amen. So today I'm kind of going to give you five steps, five steps to develop your faith in the name of Jesus. Now, Amen. are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay, number one, put the word concerning the name of Jesus first. Mm, just, just figure that it's got to be first. And that means don't compromise. Oh my goodness, I get so tired of the church compromising. I get tired of people compromising. Think how the Father God feels when he laid down his life for mm. us. So put the word of God first. Put the word of Jesus' name first in our life. Number two, we said this briefly last lesson, meditate on the word. Yes. So can you give me a definition of meditate? Don't look at my notes. I love her. I know you do. So much. Meditate yeah. means to chew. Didn't even give me a chance to I know, because I could tell that she was hesitating. It means to chew, to mutter. That's what you were just doing. To mutter? Mutter. Oh. Mutter. 
and to attend, declare, and imagine. Good. That's what That's meditate means. Thank you. Well, well, you know, muttering, so often, I even get on grace sometimes. I'll tell her to do something, she'll go, mmm, mm, and I'll say, quit muttering. But you know what? That's the definition of meditate. I didn't know she was meditating on what I was saying. She was being spiritual, and you were... I was chewing her out. Chewing her out. And then also, we need to not only meditate, we need to see ourselves as victorious in Christ. That's good. And also see ourselves as being a deliverer for others. We covered that with Peter. Yes. You know, you just go into a city, and you see a need, and it's like, okay, come here, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Meeting needs. Reaching people changing lives that's right so good number three act on the word mark 16 yes. verse 18 can you read that and to that's us? what we're talking about that's right now is about. acting on the word so mark chapter 16 and verse 18 this is part of the commission and i love this because it is a co-mission you take him out of it and it's your own mission this doesn't work so you need you and jesus side by side commissioned together and when it's the two of you you're going to see Mighty things happen. It says in Mark chapter 16 and verse 18, they will pick up snakes with their hands. You say, wait a second, I don't like snakes. I don't either. I don't either. But I like to think of this is that you're literally going to pick up the enemy and his demonic forces with your hands, and it's not going to harm you. That's right. Think about Paul on the island of Malta, where in the book of Acts, he's bit by that snake. And what happens? He shakes it off. He throws it into the fire. So when you have a situation comes, out of nowhere, it's poisonous, it's intended to kill you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. So you just shake it off into the fire. Uh, it says, they will pick up snakes with their hands and when they drink deadly poison, no matter what's going on, I, I know, and I can understand we're in this household, we're dairy free. That's right. We're gluten free. We are. We're carb free. Sugar tree. We're yeah, sugar, sugar free. free. Um, what do we eat? Tree bark and water. That's pretty much it. Um, but a lot of times people do it because they're trying to be healthy, but I hear like BPA and, and elemental PA I don't and, know any of and all those things. And we're, a lot of people genuinely are concerned with whether it be what we're having put with food or, or, or maybe whatever. medications, yeah. whatever the sense might be. Uh, I know there's a lot of new medications that have come up. And if you have anything inside of you that's been ingested, God's saying, hey, I want to give you this promise right. way before we ever have this happen in 2021, 2022, that you will drink deadly poison and it will not hurt Amen. you. So let's say you're having an adverse reaction to something. Hold on to this. No matter what you might have had put in your body or you might have ingested, no deadly poison will harm you. Right. What a beautiful promise to stand on. It says they will place their hands on the sick and they will get well. And that's why we're called to lay hands on people and to pray over people. Just that simple touch is that transferring of the anointing. And that's what we're called to do. And the promise is, is that they're going to get well. That's right. Hallelujah. I know. Because God's word is true. It's yes. not a lie. It's the truth. But you and I have to activate our faith. Now, what does activate mean? Simple way. When I go into a room that's dark, I activate the lights. I turn them on. Yes. And so my faith gets activated when I turn it on. When I start speaking the word of God, when I start declaring what he's already promised me, by his stripes I am healed. Or, Father, I thank you that all of the needs that I have have been met by your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes. Those are That's the way you activate your faith. So act on the word. That was number three. So number one, I got to go back. Put the word concerning the name of Jesus first. Number two, meditate on the word, mutter it, chew on it, digest it. Number three, act on the word, activate that word in your life. Number four is make a decision to live by faith. Wow. And you say, how do I do that? Practice living by faith. Just know God Thank you by your faith that you've given me because I'm a believer. I'm going to see things changed. Yes. And I'm not going to be moved by my feelings. 
I'm not going to be moved by what my doctor's report is. I'm not going to be moved by what my body says. I am only activated by, and my faith is moved with the decision that I made to live by faith. So practice your faith. We even said that. Open up your mouth and start saying things because, as Jesse says over and over again, what I'm looking at is subject to change. Mm -hmm. He says that over and over again. And what we're looking at with our natural eye is subject to change. But the Word of God is forever. Hallelujah. So make your decision to live by faith. And number five, this one's sometimes tough. Make the decision to live by love. Because sometimes people are not the most lovable people in the world. And just like I have to practice my faith, I have to practice my love. Yes. I have to make the decision that I'm going to walk in love. And the reason this is 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. It explains to you why we have to practice love. Amen. So 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8. These are the love books. Uh, I love this so much. It says, Whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. You say, oh, no, 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 I, I know God, I love God, Jesus is up in my heart, but I just like getting mean, and I just, I like joking, and it's my personality, and I just like being a little snarky. No, 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 if you don't love, then you don't know God. That's right. And that's such a, a humbling and sobering and shocking statement. God is love. And so you're going to do what you, the, that character and the attributes that you have, I should say, is is what you worship. In other words, did you just drop your mic? Yes, I did, yes, but it's, you it's did. still attached. That's okay. In other words, if you are worshiping God, who is love, you're going to love. And this is kind of mean, but if you're worshiping the devil, he's not love, and so you're going to act more like sure. that. So it's, it's a fruit, and Jesus says you're known by your fruit. And so if we are lovers of the Lord, if we love God and we love his word, then we are going to love one another because that's his first and greatest commandment is to love God and to love one another. So we have to walk in love with one another. That's right. And love is not a feeling. No. Love is a person. His name is Jesus. Yes. And we have to get to that point to realize that. And, and so often we'll say, well, this person hurt my heart or, or this person injured my family. Well, you know, John the Baptist got beheaded. And Jesus did not take offense. Mm. I'm sure he was saddened in his heart, yes. but he wasn't going, I'm going to take care of them and they're going to get it one day. No, he loved them because he knew they needed Jesus. They needed that salvation. So you and I as a believer must take the position of walking in faith, but walking in love, but also using his name. Because that name of Jesus is so powerful. It is. And the moment that you and I have received him as our personal savior in our hearts and in our lives, we were recreated to be a love, build, a love building, a, a temple of the living God that houses mm. him so that he can be glorified. That's but good. we have to develop our faith. We have to develop our faith and we will see the results that we need to see in our lives. So the scripture I want to end with, I kind of threw this one in. You can see here by my notes, John 14, verse 13. Read yes. it because I'm going to give a different definition. Amen. So John chapter 14 and verse 13, it says, and I will do, this is Jesus speaking, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Okay, you ready for my translation? Because I found it. Whatever ye ask or demand, mm. in my name, I will do it. Wow. And you say, well, that's kind of weird. Uh, he's the creator of the world. Why are you demanding? Because he wants you to make certain that you know who you are and what he has already said. Yes. Now, with Gracie, if I tell her, I want you to go do this, you know what she always says to me? What did daddy say? And, you know, sometimes she kind of just grinch, but she's right. What did my daddy say? Because my daddy's word rules. And I'm telling you, our Father in heaven, his word rules for us. That's and good. so you need to start demanding what the word says. Now I'm going to go over this one more time. Number one, meditate. Oh, excuse me. Number one is put the word of God first. Make the name of Jesus first. Then number two, meditate on his word. Yeah. Chew on it. Let it become a part of who you are. Number three, act on the word. 
It's not going to do me any good if I just talk about it. I need to become the Word and let the Word become what I need to be a part of. Mm. And then number four, make the decision to live by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I have to live by faith. Number five, make the decision to live the life of love. God is love. Even when someone may hurt you or your family, I'm not going to try to get revenge. What I'm going to do is bless them and then give Jesus the glory for my life and their lives. Amen. Amen. So we pray that through this study that you have grasped just a portion of the name of Jesus. Right. And so take that name. And the next time you're in a scenario that you don't know what to do, say the name of Jesus. Say the name. When you say his name, the enemy, he not only trembles, but he flees. And every single knee must bow to the name of Jesus. That's right. So we just declare the name of Jesus over yes. you, over Jesus. your body, your finances, your mind, your spirit, your situation, and your surroundings. Jesus. We declare the name of Jesus. And we are so thankful for you. We are so thankful for you watching. We love you. And we are excited for the next couple of series that we have in store. Thank you so much.